Hey everyone, welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast, all things cycling. And today, super exciting. I love Fridays. I talk about cycling tips and tricks from the coach's perspective or whatever it is that you're you have questions about. So if you have questions, please put in the comments, send me an email, say, hey, I've always wondered about this, or how do you take care of that? What are your recommendations? I just absolutely love, you know, either doing some research or if, if I need to, or really just putting out some advice based on my own personal experiences. So before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, share, before you hear what I have to say, and uh, make sure to su you subscribe to both my po I po uh, podcast and my YouTube channel and put those notifications on. Okay, so today, it's a really exciting topic is stop wearing underwear in your bike shorts. Okay, that's all we're going to talk about. Stop wearing underwear in your bike shorts. Ladies, stop wearing underwear in your bike shorts. Okay, and I'm going to give you some reasons why you should stop wearing underwear in your bike shorts. First of all, before we even get into the tips on how to, things to change up, is that it looks uncool and nobody wants lines in their bike shorts. Plus, it can be a health thing. Um, it can be a comfort thing. So, and, and then I'll give you this one last one, yeast infections. Okay, if that doesn't make you stop wearing underwear in your bike shorts. I don't know what will. There's a lot of things like we're going to dive into what you can do. So I have seven to eight tips on how to change it up, things to look at um, with regards to your bike shorts and underwear and saddle sores specifically. Have you ever had a saddle sore? And if you had, you know exactly how painful it is. I'll just tell you a little story. Um, I, when I first started racing in 2005, I got the biggest, sa I, I was just like, what the hell is this? The biggest saddle sore ever. It was the size of my thumb on the inside leg, right on my sits bone. So every time I sat on my bike, it was excruciating. I had the lancet. I had, to, it was horrible, but I've heard that these things continue to come back if you're just prone. And sometimes you actually have to go to the hospital to have them taken care of. So you definitely don't want to get into that situation. So here's some things to think about. Okay, number one is there's calamine. Okay, so number one is like just get out of your bike shorts as soon as you're done. Your bike, your bike ride. So don't hang out in them. Try not to. I I try and change out of them as soon as I get to the car. So make sure you have like, if it's a summer, like a really nice pullover, easy sundress, skirt, baggy shorts, whatever, no underwear. Just let everything kind of air out and dry, period. First one, um, because what can happen is it's just the moisture. You want to start drying things out. This is where um, infection can sit in, and um, and you know, like, and if you find that you're you're going to be taking a long time to get to have a shower afterwards, always bring baby wipes in your car. Not only are they great to like clean off your face after like a ride of all the salt and the dirt and your hands and your arms. But, you know, give a, give a little, little uh, clean up down there as well so that everything is clean and moist and ready to dry out. Okay, so that's number one. Just get out of your bike shorts, okay? You don't want to be sitting in it depending on how long and particularly if it was a wet or really hot ride, right? Like, you just don't want to sit in that kind of moistness. You know, yeast infection, yeast infection. Okay, next one. If that doesn't work, there's always calamine lotion. You can stop and you get that at Walmart. Um, you can put that on. I've never used it, but it's one of the top, one of the tips that I have so that you can, 
it's apparently drives them up. So if you try that, or if you're a big fan, I'd love to hear about it. I just have never tried it myself. Number three is chamois butter. Now these tips aren't in any particular order, but I do love chamois butter and I wish. All right, chamois butter. Now, what's the best brand? Now, I'm just gonna talk for the ladies, for my lady part. I love this brand, Hoo-Ha Ride Glide. It's the funniest thing, I've been using this for almost a decade. It's amazing, it's tingly, it's minty, it's made by women, for women, and how you do it is, so why would you put chamois butter on, or chamois butter, is to provide a little bit more, less friction. So, you know, a little bit more movement in the bike shorts when you're biking. Um, also, I find that if you go to the bathroom, um, the urine causes, like say you have to go to the bathroom in behind the tree. Okay, you're not gonna get to wipe, right? And the acid from the urine can cause some issues. So not that this is, a chamois cream is going to take care of that, but it can also caught, like create a little bit of a barrier against your skin, okay? Um, and I just love it. I just uh, slather it on. You can, and usually this is how it happens. I just put a whole bunch on my hand like this. It smells awesome, smell it. <laughs> and I just basically reach in and give a good swipe, but the proper way to put your chamois butter on is actually to put it on your chamois, on your bike shorts, and then rub it in. <laughs> and then it's, you have a little bit more because if you happen to go to the bathroom, then you're just gonna wipe it off the way I did it. But I don't always have the foresight to do that. All right, so next one. So we have, so we're on to number four. Um, you wanna look at your bike shorts right? Um, what are you using? And I'm going to show you. So what are you using for your bike shorts? I'm going to show you a, two pairs of bike shorts that I have. You know, people say, you know, buy expensive bike shorts. Um, you know what? I have cheap bike shorts and I have expensive bike shorts and they're both very comfortable and I both love them the same and they're both completely different. Now I'll show you these ones here, the padding. So there's padding. It's not a whole, it's not very thick. Um, these are actually very old, um, probably about 10 years old. Yeah, I have a lot of bike shorts that are older and they're still in great condition. And you look at this one, this one's very high end. It's got like pressure points and it's got like gel bum pads. And you know what? Sometimes this one's great. Sometimes I find these bigger, thicker ones like kind of uncomfortable. They make your bum look kind of funny. Um, and it's, it's sometimes it's just too much. Um, where this other one, it's very, it's, it's more foamy, I guess. And I prefer that to this one, um, the more higher end one. But that's just me and I some I ha like I have varying degrees of bike shorts so some people like them really thick some people like them thinner some like tri shorts like I'll bike on tri shorts for shorter rides just because of less padding but yeah so buying bike shorts is kind of you know it's hit and miss because you can't really bring them back afterwards um, so try them on with your underwear, make sure you like them. Um, and then the next one, next tip is a saddle. So saddles can make a huge difference. If you go into a bike shop, a lot of bike shops will allow you to test them. Before you test them, get your sits bones measured. Okay. So they have this fancy thing. You sit on it. It's like a plate. Yeah, it's like a plate and it's squishy and it has all these sensors in it. So you sit on it and it measures the width of your bones on your bone. And then it'll say, okay, you need this size of saddle. 
And you're like, oh, okay. So it happened to me. I went in, I got mine measured, and apparently I was riding on a, I was riding on a 43 inch, and then I went up to a 45 or a 45 to a 48, something like that. And I was like, no way, how could this be? But it took a while to get used to, and and I could feel the difference. Like literally, my bum, like I was, my cis bones were kind of siding, sliding around the side of the saddle and when I was properly fitted they were actually sitting like right on the saddle so that can be a huge game changer for some people is just getting your bum measured and they give you recommendations and then you can take these bike sh bike saddles and go home and and try them out you know for a week or something you know for a couple rides the next one is La, la, la. take a few days off your bike yeah if you're experiencing some serious saddle sores then it is probably a good idea just to take a break and air things out and before you get back on the bike okay or some people you know suggest like maybe switch up different bikes um but not everybody has that you know, flexibility, have multiple bikes at home with different saddles on them. Um, but taking a break might be a really good idea. The next one is like taking a bath. So with some Epsom salts, that can help. And then, um, you know, just spending some time off the bike. And the last one, number eight, is if all else fails and you still have like something like a saddle sore, um, and it's starting to get infected or it has it infected or they're just not going away, this is the time to go call the doctor or go see a doctor and see what they have to say. Now, I tell you ladies, underwear is the culprit for a lot of things that you can avoid. And I'm, I tell, you know, every time I go with my group Riley's, you know, you can definitely tell who's wearing underwear, obviously. And uh, thongs don't thongs are the worst so don't think that wearing thongs is going to be anything different because like this padding is there for a reason it's and it's also if you see it's very soft and softness against your lady parts is what you want you don't want to be sitting which cotton causes a lot of moisture and these chamois provide the wicking of moisture and the breathability. So you don't wanna be preventing that by putting a layer of cotton or any other synthetic between you and your bike shorts. Now, there's that, there's the moisture, there's the buildup, there's the creasing from like the basically the hem of your bike shorts. Like it could be in the front, it can be on the sides. So just think about it. And that's the number one rule for anybody. Like even the thongs, get rid of them. Like I, I'll tell you one story before I finish. I had a bike studio, a uh, spin studio for like eight years. There was one time that I decided to wear um, thongs in my bike shorts. And I was out of my mind in pain for the whole freaking ride. I was about to go and cut them off with a pair of scissors because it was so freaking painful that <laughs> I will never forget that. I'll never forget the saddle sore. And also if you're on a multiple day ride, like, or a tour or say like um, a stage race and the first day rainy and you're starting to get some chafing happening, make sure that you air it out really well the night, that night. Okay, because obviously you got to put your shorts back on, you got to ride back or you got to do another event and it's just going to get worse. Okay, and then here's the last tip, bonus tip for you ladies. Avoid doing a clean shave. I can't even tell you how that will save you as well because when you shave it like or get waxing or a Brazilian or anything, it opens up all those pores. And that is probably the number one 
way to get saddle sores. So I know it's not probably what you want to hear because it's the summer, right? Like don't, you know, shave your legs, but don't shave your bikini line, but um, just don't do it the night before you're going to do like a long ride on the weekend. Trust me. So with that, I hope those tips really helped you. They'll be in the description. I'm going to add some reading material for you as well, because it's always good to he hear um, other stories and, and get some other articles. So there are some great ones out there. Um, with that, have an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed the cycling tips and please pass this along to your lady friends or your girlfriends who you ride with who you like clearly she's wearing her underwear and she needs to know about this <laughs> and don't forget to jump in and give us a five-star review and write us a little comment we i'd be greatly appreciative of that and um Make sure you subscribe and put those uh, notifications on. And with that, have an amazing weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye. All right, friends. So before you leave, I have a couple announcements for you. So the first one is I have my online free bike maintenance webinar and it's so amazing. I know I'm just tooting my own horn, but what you're going to learn is how to change a tire, how to adjust your brakes deal with a broken chain and how to use all the tools that you should have in your bike bag while you're riding. So don't miss this free online bike webinar. Go to bmc, BMC webinar.com. Calm. Now the next one is, this is kind of time sensitive guys. It's my eight week online, 90 minutes a week cycling skills course. Now this is for anyone who is still looking to gain those skills, uh, improve your form, bike pedal stroke, um, hill climbing, sprints, intervals, uh, recovery, uh, training with your heart rate, learning a bit about nutrition. This course is the last eight weeks. I have the last eight weeks and it's geared towards all those skills and techniques. Now it's one session a week and it's 90 minutes and you're gonna get a lot of quality and a good solid workout. And the last one is if you find that eight weeks is a little bit too long, then I have my four hour clinic, which is basically broken down to pedal form, hill climbing skills and drills, strength, power, and speed, and nutrition. So over the four hours, it might not even take that long, you will get all the skills and technique that you need to implement immediately, whether you're training by yourself or you're on Swift, and and it's just in a, a condensed, intensive four hours. With that, I hope you take a look. Go to my website, cyclingskillspro.com. You can find all the details for you can find all the details for these webinars and courses. Take care and have an amazing day and don't forget to share with your friends. Have a good one.